Before again, yeah, I turn it off. I have a built-in match. It's closed now. We have here a built-in match. Two built-in. Nu heb ik het dus weer ingeschaald, want dan heb je daar ook gedaan. En die hier namelijk een aantal. 27-2, ja, dat komt wel. Dat zijn nog geen inputs, denk ik. Ik heb de detect screen hier. Reset them uh, or something? Yeah, I okay. had to apply. <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna... Hey, do this just screen? be like... Are you touch? Yeah, F5 is a refresh. Uh, no, no. Station yeah, top right. I'm just gonna leave it like this. Oh, no. Top right. Yeah, top right button. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. And then probably that. Great. Sorry? Okay. Probably okay. All right. Thank you for coming. Sorry for the long delay. I messed messed up by not bringing the connector for my laptop. Uh, and I didn't know it was a special connector. So, so the talk is about um, is a little bit about my skill, but mostly about Vault, uh, which is um, which is a tool created by Hashi HashiCorp. And uh, my name is Farid Nuri Neshat. Um, I am from Iran, and um, I uh, work um, working all in data. We are a small DevOps consultancy. So uh, this is the problem. So Jane Doe from some department comes and uh, wants, uh, wants database access. And then some manager emails you and tells you that, hey, give her database access in the next 30 minutes. And um, this is how you feel. <laughs> so well, what if I could tell you that they could, the manager could do it himself? He could um, use uh, uh, he could authenticate against whatever your organization is using, and um, the credentials would expire in 24 hours or um, the amount of time that you would like it to be. So uh, I tried to create a demo, um, and uh, uh, so I put it on uh, AWS with uh, making it a little bit complicated with adding some stuff. So we have uh, some uh, MySQL uh, instances there, and um, and there is a vault instance, and um, there is three uh, console servers. So console is um, is another tool created by HashiCorp, which is um, which for this case is a key value storage. And um, Vault will store its uh, secret in console. And uh, at the same time, um, 
we're gonna tell Vault that hey, we're gonna authenticate against um, GitHub. So uh, I'm gonna talk about a little bit more more about Vault. So Vault is um, highly available um, secret storage. Basically, you can put all your um, keys there, and um, you'll be um, you'll be secure. So it is. Um, well, you can see um, that you can use it for like API keys, passwords, and certificates. Pre pretty much anything that you want it to keep secret. Uh, so. So in this case, I set up a console cluster, as I explained earlier, with a MySQL there and Vault, and I set Vault and I set Vault to use console as a storage. So basically, you can set uh, any other storage for Vault, for example, um, a database uh, or um, a stream, and um, Vault uh, will uh, encrypt everything in, the, in its uh, storage. So now to set up Vault, when, when you bring it up, you will do a Vault in it, and um, that will give you the root key that that you will uh, need to give it use that to authenticate. Also, by default, Vault is uh, sealed, and uh, when it's sealed, you cannot access it. You have to unseal it first, and to unseal it, you have to provide. Um, majority of the keys that it gave you during vault in it. So this is for a case that there is a, some breach or something, and you can uh, with one of those keys that it gave it to you, you can un you can uh, seal it again, and vault will be inaccessible. And um, in case, and then uh, you wanted to bring it back on, unseal it, then you need um, the majority of those keys. So. Um, here's our console members. Ah, so by default, when you do a vault in it, it will um, it will uh, give you five keys, but then you need three of those keys to unseal it. You technically give those three keys each one to one of your developers, or put them in a secure machine. And um, again, at least you need uh, for three of those keys. This is uh, configurable, and um, you can use GPG for um, so that it will uh, encrypt those keys with the, with each user's um, key. So then um, the person who initialized Vault doesn't have to see those keys, so it won't be in, um, in te plain text. And um, that uh, root token, root token is a token that we can use to authenticate against it. So this is an example of unsealing vault. So you can see uh, we try to seal vault, and uh, there's a missing client token. So okay, we have to authenticate. We authenticate with the token that it gave us. And then, um, then we try to unseal it. We, we provide the first key, the second key, and the third key, and now it's unsealed. Now you can uh, access it via the API. And um, you can uh, have policies and tell users what they can um, read, what they cannot read. So you can uh, have some secrets. Uh, have some secrets that are readable to some of your users in some group and um, some to like for example new users so in this case um, we, we, we're setting up vault to uh, give us da database credentials from MySQL so we create a uh, core policy and this is just for that group this, this is just a name and then we say, okay, you have access to the read-only database, the demo DB, and um, we can also see what are the databases available to you. And um, we enable GitHub uh, authentication. You can you can have many authentications. 
For example, if you want to access Vault from a from an EC2 instance, and you should uh, use AWS IAM, so then it will uh, it will uh, it will just connect to the Vault with the given uh, given instance profile. Um, so, so I have set up um, GitHub authentication, and um, you can um, get a personal token and um, give it to Vault, and now you're authenticated with that policy. Here's uh, how you can get a token for yourself in GitHub. Uh, it's quite easy. And um, it needs to have that read um, org information because um, Vault will try to see the organization that you're in. And, um, and earlier, I set it up to only give access to the audit data organization. So only my organization with their GitHub account can authenticate against Vault. Now, here I try to configure my school. And um, the, the, there, is a, there is many databases you can configure. So this is for my school. And um, so I will, um, I will give, um, give a simple uh, grant. And um, by default, I will set, it to set the credentials to um, expire in one hour. But the, the client could ask for 24 hours expiry. So, and um, I call this the read-only database. All right. Okay. So, mm, let me SSH to into my uh, vault. Hopefully, everything will work fine. Oh yeah. Is it readable? Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, okay. So um, now as a user, let me see. I can um. Uh, so I, took, I put my tokens in plain text here, but this is not something you should do. Um, so I can uh, authenticate first with the uh, token. And um, now I can um, read stuff. Whoa. So let's, uh, let's see. Ah. So now you see it, um, it gave me a username and a password. And um, this was the username and password that you can use to um, authenticate against my school. And this one only lasts for an hour. So um, let me see if it works. Okay, I can log in, and um, let me see if I can see my table. Oh, yeah. Let me see if I can um, insert something there. Oh no, uh, because I don't have the because I didn't give the grant to insert anything into that table. So. For this example, this uh, for example, the user could be just an uh, analyst, and they want to just uh, read stuff. 
but then you can give them, give, for example, depending on the policy you said, you can give uh, access to do whatever they want. Now, all right, so to the other part, let me see. Now, since I don't have my laptop, mm. oh, I cannot do the other demo, but so in this case, user um, authenticates against Vault and then they ask for the credentials. Vault create a, creates a record in console and issues a grant statement to MySQL. And then it gives the username and password. And um, everything is logged, everything, um, there, there are audit records that you can, can view later and what did the user do with Vault. And um, after the expiry, Vault will remove that grant from my school and that user and password is no longer valid. Um, and um, so you can um, also use the HTTP API, which is a recommended way. So I, um, I created a, a very simple uh, a very simple lambda to actually with a with a with a simple interface web interface to to connect to Vault and um, to and authenticate with OAuth from GitHub and then ask for the username and password. So what your users can do, they can go to that simple web web interface which I cannot demo, <laughs> and um, they just click login with GitHub. GitHub interface shows up, and um, they will um, type their pa GitHub password. Then, uh, then the interface will show what databases they can have access, and they can click, and they will get the username and password. Then this is something uh, non-technical users can do. So, Vault um, uh, is highly available. Right now I have only one instance of it, but you can have, for example, three instances. And um, one, you can only, you can talk with one of them or any of them, and they can, they will talk to each other. They will, um, um, sh they will share the configuration, so they and they will uh, use the same uh, storage backend. And then the, there are a lot of integrations. So, like I said, you can have AWS or LDAP, which is uh, which a lot of organizations use. And um, an interesting use case would be also to have um, to generate um, SSH certificates. For example, um, somebody in your organization wants to access a server, so they will uh, they will uh, connect to Vault API and then request for a certificate, and Vault will give that give a certificate for them. Then they can um, use that certificate to connect to a SSH server. Then uh, there is a, there is a lot of um, there's a lot of stuff published about Vault. Um, I use Terraform to to put up uh, my infrastructures, and uh, there is a nice module. Oh. Where is the? When was it gone? Oh, okay. All right. So there is a nice gist about how to install Vault on AWS, which I used, and um, and there is a Terraform module for uh, setting up a console cluster, which takes all the pain out of it. 
And there is a, even a nice blog post from Percona on um, how to use Vault with MySQL. And uh, that's pretty much it. it. So, just um, I want to also thank my uh, CTO because he was uh, he had the original idea behind this and he created most of the slides and um, I helped him create the content. So, and uh, this was my uh, first presentation at the conference. So, thank you. Any questions? Okay. Well, right now we aren't using it in our current company, but at, uh, at the client that we had, um, they were uh, they were using to just um, keep keep all their secrets there. So, for example, um, API tokens, and um, so then uh, developers could um, authenticate with LDAP and then upload the tokens there. And um, the uh, the machines uh, in AWS they had the instance profile. With a with a certain uh, role that Vault knew about it and we configured Vault to see whenever a machine tries to authenticate with a, from a certain uh, instance, then uh, it will give access to those secrets. Yeah. Oh, well, um, use something like Terraform. You can. It does that. It does that. Yeah. Yep, you, well the thing is that you, you have to, before you run Terraform, you always have to check the plan output, always make sure it doesn't do, and uh, you can um, configure, you can change the plan and um, give, a, give a plan that you want to Terraform to do that, so then you can have like uh, blue-green deployments, so you will deploy your new instances and then um, and then when, when everything is deployed, then you throw away the old ones. Meanwhile, if, if somehow, by any magic, your whole environment is removed, then uh, yeah, you have to deploy from the beginning. Meanwhile, uh, the, the other thing is that um, you should always uh, deploy in more than one availability zone, and uh, preferably more, more than one region. And since uh, Vault the, the instances can talk to each other. So hopefully everything's gonna be fine. <laughs> uh, well, um, to be honest, I haven't um, looked into it myself. <laughs> it's, it's always the part that I would put later, <laughs> whenever somebody asks for it. Um, but, uh, but, but, but uh, I believe that Vault uh, has um, audit backends, uh, for example, uh, syslog, or um, maybe I think uh, I'm guessing, but it could maybe put put stuff on. Uh, on a database or something, or um, so you can uh, configure it, and it will just uh, send the audits to the backend that you want. You want. Yeah. 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 Con console. Um, 
so in this in uh, in this example, I had three three instances of console in uh, three different uh, subnets, and yeah. Um, um, so and um, but yeah. So it's the, 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 it's kind of like a yeah, exactly. Yeah, for uh, Vault, uh, I'm not sure you can uh, co connect it to Redis, but uh, I, I know that it has a support for a variety of databases, and um, MTCD or something like that. Yeah, so it also has support for that as well. Okay. I guess um, that's pretty much it. It was a short talk. Yeah.